worst thing about being skinned is being Jet Harris. Well, it is a bit humiliating. Oh, I've got... I've got all your records, Jet, you know. <laughs> well, that's very kind of you, you know. But you couldn't lend us a few bob, could you? <laughs> By the time I was 24, I think I was up to uh, about 3,000 quid a week, which is, is a lot. Well, it's a lot now. Great to welcome back the Shadow. I thought the, there was a bottomless pit of money in the bank. It was the night I was, I was voted Musician of the Year. We were chauffeur-driven on the way back. The car collided with a Midland Red bus, and uh, I hurt my head. It put me out of action for months, a couple of years. And, of course, I suppose people soon forgot, and I, I didn't really want to play anymore. It knocked it out of me. And uh, that's, when, that's when I really started spending money, of course, when, when I was put out of action and became very fond of vodka. And that, that was the, the real downfall of me, I suppose, that car crash. I had so many, which I thought were friends, which turned out not to be, you know, coming along for the ride. Wonder where they all are now. Yes, I know all about being skint. It's been up, it's been down over the years, but I do know about being skint. That people are too quick to remind you what you've done, stupid, you know. <clears throat> I mean, I can't stand it when people say to me, if I'd have been you, I mean, how the hell do they know what they'd have been like at, at the same age with, with as much money as, as I had? Some people must think to themselves, oh, right, oh, he's up for grabs now, we'll, we'll have a go at this one. We couldn't have a go at him when he was on television, but we'll have a go at him now, you know. <laughs> but I became very hard and can take it. I've had to do some rough gigs with sort of local bands wherever I've lived, you know, sort of semi-pro bands. Had to go miles in a dormobile, you know, for about 30 quid. <laughs> and playing some of these terrible <coughs> sort of labour clubs or conservative clubs, little tiny clubs in back streets. I've done all those. But 30 quid was 30 quid. And this is when you get pulled up. They say, well, what are you doing playing in a place like this? When you come out with something, oh, just keeping the fingers in, you know, it's not. You're doing it for the, the 30 quid. Well, one little jape that I got up to in Jersey was... Um, I found a, a smashing cockle bed over there, so I used to go and pick cockles, take them home and cook them. And uh, a governor of one of the pubs says, bring me in some of your cockles, I'd like to see them. So I took in a great jar of cockles, which I'd put in malt vinegar, and he decided he was going to sell them to the customers for 20p a scoop. So he gave me 10p every time, so that was some good beer money. Well, you just work out little ways of surviving. It comes naturally if you're crafty. <laughs> If you've got big dog ends, <laughs> break them open and roll them up again. <laughs> it lasts forever. They don't taste too clever, but <laughs> it's a smoke. How long have we been together now? About... Maybe four years. Be four years. Nothing. We've been married three. Mm. Three years. The last few years, we found it quite hard to, to make ends meet. We've struggled, haven't we? Oh, yeah. The old pot stew. 
<laughs> last two week. <laughs> On the point of rank. <laughs> On the point of being rank, yes. With drinking, you've got to be ready yourself to say, well, now come on, this is it, this time. And I think I've had to get to this age to realise that this is it. And I, I've been dry now for three years and I'm enjoying it. <laughs> I'm blowed if I'm going to spoil it again. And I, I'm far more serious about my music now. Mentally, musically, I, I feel about 21 like I did, in, you know, in the old days. We've tried various managers. I mean, you've got to take a chance, whichever one you you choose. You don't know if he's going to be a straight man or is he out to catch me. So you, you every time, I mean, I've had three in, in, in 12 months and each one has been <laughs> dodgy. April the 27th. Pissed off, nothing to write. April the 28th, ditto. Oh, April the 29th and again. This job you live in hope. You sit by that telephone, waiting, hoping someone's going to say, I've got you 72 theatres to do this year. I mean, I, I'm not thinking about being a big... I've done the big star bit in the 60s. I don't ever expect that again. But just halfway up the ladder would do with constant work. I mean, there's, there's all these empty promises. Oh, I'll do this for you, I'll do that. And, and you wait and wait, and there's, there's no money. And, and you want things. I, I want things. I want to go and get things. <laughs> you know, things. <laughs> We've had some really, <laughs> we've had some funny places, haven't we? I mean, this is our fourth, fourth move, isn't it, in, in four years. I must tell you this. When we moved up here, see, my friends, they said, where are you living? I, <laughs> I said, it's a penthouse. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was a third floor. <laughs> you can't let on, though. I couldn't let on. It was just this grotty little flat. <laughs> it's full stop, you can't do things. I mean, if, if there's some particular musician in town or singers or groups, you can't go because you just haven't got the money. It makes me all the more determined to, to make some more money. I'll do it. <laughs> 